So I get the question quite a bit, you know, fintech companies are out there everywhere and everyone's install installing and implementing automation and really going down that efficiency path. And what does that mean for our workforce and what does that mean for our teams and how we're, you know, looking at our teams and wanting to reduce headcount. So I think, you know, there is some of that element, if, especially if you're bulked up for a lot of manual processes in the beginning. But we've impl implemented automation where I work, and one thing that we're doing is really looking at the different talents of our folks and saying, you know, where do they want to apply their talents? Are they really a day-to-day -day transactional person and they really like that? Or do they have some really special talents that we can now pull out and leverage in different ways? And it's really made a, an impact on our team, um, and we really focus a lot on, are they on the best team? You know, would they be happier on a, a different supply chain or transportation? Or We have a lot of different teams and we want to look at what's the best for that team member and where, they're, where are their talents going to make the most difference. So I don't think it's necessarily about reducing headcount. It's about what talents of theirs are you leveraging and what do you want the talent of your team to do? So we're providing a lot more data and analytics to the rest of our business than we were before implementation and when, when we didn't have automation and we were really just focusing on the day-to-day. -day. We have a different focus now, not that we have necessarily fewer people. So benchmarking is a really important tool, whether you're you know, gauging your success on a new implementation of automation or you're really just gauging how your team is doing overall, even after a go-live of a project. Both are really important. So three of the most important metrics that I see in your whole credit to cash uh, flow through are, number one, cash apps and straight through processing. So understanding where you were and how you're benchmarking yourself prior and post implementation or really just throughout the years, um, what is your percent of straight through processing? How many payments are you actually having to touch by the team? Because that's a huge, that's a huge uh, metric for me. And then also um, the AR percent current. So your overall percent current tells you a lot about how you're doing in all areas. So I think it's one of those metrics that's just really kind of all-encompassing for me. And if you go even a little level further, you can talk about what's your percent current in your aging buckets as a percent of your AR. So that's a great one to look at and keep track of. And you can find lots of things and metrics uh, that will benchmark other industries that are like yours. So you're not just benchmarking against your own success. Um, and then for disputes, days to resolve the dispute and the deduction. So if you are lengthening that time or shortening that time over a period, then you know if you're doing the right things and you're going the right direction. So AR practitioners such as myself want to make their teams more accepting of AI and automation. We do this, I think, at the very beginning by getting them involved in the project. So we want to make sure that team members are involved in the blueprinting, they give feedback, they give suggestions, because, you know, I'm not in the weeds every day, the team is. So they're the best people to be involved in that process. And then as we go along, we involve them in testing, and then after implementation and after go live, it can be uh, six months or a year down the road, we're still asking for their feedback. You know, if this system could do anything sky's the limit what do you want it to do because we're always going to be wanting our automation to improve and again the team is the best people to make those suggestions when Artemills implemented automation in our cash application process three of the top KPIs that improved for us were our straight through processing number so how many payments go through into the ERP without any manual work also, the time it takes to work those payments. So how fast can your Cash Apps team get through a day's worth of payments? And then finally, accuracy, which is really important in cash applications. So you want to make sure you're able to catch any exceptions on the front end. So when everything goes into your ERP, it applies with accuracy. When I think of AI-enabled deduction validity predictors, a huge benefit I could see is getting the deductions in the hands of the correct person as quickly as possible. So an invalid deduction, you want to get that back in front of the customer so you can get that money back in the door. If it's a valid deduction, you're going to want to get that to the customer service team or the sales team so they can research and approve a credit memo. Overall, a deduction validity predictor will 
decrease that time it takes to resolve a deduction.